Now the concept covered in this talk is the dynamic versus steady state model. Now, what is a dynamic model? Now, sometimes to understand some concept, you can go back and look at what is not a dynamic model or what's the opposite of that particular term. So for dynamic model, we have something which is not dynamic model is called a steady state model. Now, what is a steady state model? Now to understand, let's go back to the example of this distillation column. Now again, distillation column may have different and have a distillation column has different control problems. Let's take a look at the one control problem where you want to maintain the top composition manipulating the reflux ratio. So for that case, you need to model between reflux ratio and the top composition. So model between, so let's look at model between X, D and call it R. It can represent reflux flow, reflux rate, reflux ratio, whatever is the finally manipulated. <coughs> now a steady state relation between this X, D and R would look like, so suppose if the reflux is you know the different value of reflux and at that particular value, you know this top composition look like something like this. So what this relation tells you that if R is 1, what is the value of XD? Or if R is 2, what is the value of XD and so on. Now it tells you if you want to maintain XD, suppose 90%, you may have to, so if this is 1, value this is 0 0.8, and this is suppose 3, 0 0.9 or something like that. So it tells you, if you want to maintain the reflux, maintain the top composition at 90%, you have to maintain a reflux ratio of suppose 3. If you need to maintain a top composition of 80%, you, you need to set the reflux ratio at 1 and so on. So it captures that and you can operate in that way. But what it cannot capture is that, so the steady state model capture the steady state relation. That's understandable. But it cannot capture transition, meaning that if you change the reflex ratio from 1 to 2, how the top composition changes and goes to the initial value to the final value, okay? How it goes, meaning that how long would it take and what would be really the path for going from this initial value of 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. Now to get this, we need to express to capture that, we need to express y t as a function of u t. So remember that the time came into play. More specifically, what you'll have to know, you need to know not only the value of y, to mathematically express it, you need to have the rate of change of y and rate of change of u. So eventually, a dynamic model will include something like y and its rate of change of different degrees. Okay. And that will be related to that of the u. So you see that here, the time came into play, and then the rate of change of the variables came into play. So this will be some sort of what is called a dynamic model. 
So the steady state model will tell you the relation between y steady state to u steady state, meaning that relation between the output at a steady value is a function of the input at that steady value. So you can have this one can be represented as a you know a polynomial equation whatsoever will simply tell you what's the relation between the steady state value of u and y. Again, just for notation for this case, u will be r, this one will be xd. We'll consistently use the term y for output and u for the input. Now, what would the dynamic relation look like? So, as I said, dynamic relation must capture the transition from one value to another, meaning that if you have if you change the input, suppose initially it was, so the reflex was changed from 1 to 2, and suppose this is the xd axis, so initially it was suppose 0 0.8, it will go to suppose 0 0.9. Now, dynamic relation should capture how this value went from, suppose the initial value of 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So, this relation between these two variables, any mathematical formulation that can capture the these two relation, yt and ut, that will be a dynamic model. And typically, we see for our cases, it will involve differential equation. Now let's look at another example of what is called this reactor cooling system. So for reactor cooling system, we have the input to be the coolant flow and the output to be the, so the input is the coolant flow, output is the reactor temperature. So if the coolant flow increases, the reactor temperature is decreased. So maybe something, some relation like this can be there. Now that's the steady state relation. Again, the reactor temperature, suppose T, a steady state as a function of coolant flow steady state. Now the dynamic relation for the same process would look like with time, if you make a change in the coolant flow, how this output will change with time. So maybe initially it was here, go like this. So this is your temperature of the reactor and this is the coolant flow. And so this temperature. So any relation that can capture that can relate these two variable will be a dynamic model. Okay, so that's the basic understanding about the steady state versus dynamic model. A steady state model it captures the relation between two variable at their steady state. The dynamic model captures the transition that if you make a change in the input, how the output is going to change with time. Okay, now this for these two cases we have shown only the change in a way where it was changed from just one value to another in a what is called a step manner. It can be different way, it can be changed any way you want, the model should be able to capture that. Okay? So that's the idea here, the concept of dynamic versus a steady state model. Thank you.